On Bishop Barra's YouTube channel, you will find exclusive content to uplift your faith. The Word of Faith with Bishop Macedo. Live meetings from Bishop Barra Fonseca. Testimonies, thoughtful advice, prayers, and much more. Do you like it? Then subscribe today and share the videos on your social network. You are listening now to A Word of Faith with Bishop Macedo. May God bless all of you in the name of Jesus, those who believe, obviously. And as we are the second day of the Fast of Daniel, the Fast of 21 Days, in this second day, I would like to call your attention of the reason why, the reason why many people do not receive the Holy Spirit even though they make the fast or they do the fast, while others do. So what makes the difference? How come some receive quickly and the others don't? Or it takes a long time for one to receive. And I would like for you to observe and to think right now and to meditate with me in this word that Jesus spoke on the last day of the great feast. Let us read this word. The scripture says that in John chapter 7, 37, that on the last day of the great feast is the feast of the tabernacle. So the last day of this feast, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. So, let us pay close attention to this word, because in order to cry out, in order to speak out or to invite, in order to say to the people or to call their attention, so that they could hear, they could hear what Jesus was pretty much promised before he promised, before he said, if anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink, Jesus, he stood up, he stood up, so he was seated and he stood up he stood up, in other words, in order to take an action, no one that is seated in their sane conscience can do something extraordinary or even important that will obviously meet the need of those who are in need. So Jesus, he stood up. He stood, so he rose, meaning he, he came out of his comfortable zone, he stopped being comfortable by himself, and he stood up, and why? Because he had something that was extremely important to say. And then, it was then that he cried out. Interesting. The Word of God, whenever we meditate on it, whenever we stop to think, and whenever we stop to analyze, we discover things that we did not know of. And things that are, that are revealing. For example, this is a revelation. Right here is one revelation. Because normally, how many times I have read this scripture, I have read it so many times, you may have read it many times yourself, and this seemed so common, because the more you read, you don't pay attention, you, you don't pay close attention to what is written, especially if you read it many times. 
But whenever we read, when we read it slowly, and when we read it thinking each word, so then we have something extra, extra to re be revealed. And Jesus, he stood. So he says, Jesus stood. And it looks like something natural, right? When a person does not meditate, they, they are not going to evaluate what, what is the meaning of this. Jesus stood. So he stood because what he was going to say, what he was going to speak out loud, and the offering that he was going to offer was the most important thing in the last day of the feast. Now you can imagine, on the last day of the feast, the person puts all their strength, right? They put all their passions, all their desires, all their soul to it, to live, to live that moment, to live that moment of the last day of the feast. And here was the feast of the tabernacle. But Jesus, on the last day of the feast, he stood up. He stood up in order to speak to somebody. He did not stand up for him to pray with the disciples or to hold hands with people next to him. He stood up so that he could cry out. He stood up so that he could cry out, so that he could make his voice audible, to make his voice stronger, to make his voice heard in that very moment. Now imagine you in a great feast, everybody is still talking, blah, 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 here and there, and now people are talking, talking, everybody is making noise. But you don't hear nothing else. You don't perceive things around you either. But when Jesus, he stood up, uh, when he stood up, he stood up because he had something extraordinary, important to share. And when he stood up, he cried out which is another way to pay, to make people to be attentive to what he was going to say. So those who were going to be interested, they were going to hear. And then he said, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Well, my dear listener, the purpose, the purpose of the fast of Daniel is exactly to bring people the conscience of something very important, more important than your husband, more important than your wife, your children, your relatives, or your boyfriend or girlfriend, or your bride or your bridegroom. More important than your studies, more important than your money, more important than anything that exists out there, more important than anything out there. So Jesus, that's why the Bible says that he cried out, John registered here that he cried out, it was a cry out. You must have made a cry out. You must have made, you know, prayers. How many times we supplicate, we invoke, we insist on something that we want, a request that we need. That's right. So Jesus also cried out. And he cried out for people that were thirsty. But thirsty in that moment, or in that hour, or the last day when there was wine to spare, there was a lot of water to spare, a lot of food perhaps. So how can he come now and stand up and say and cry out, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me, to me and drink. Now imagine, imagine yourself, let us, let us imagine now for that moment, let us put our minds in that day when he, Jesus was there in this very, in this very day. He cried out, he cried out 
for those who are thirsty or were thirsty. The fast of Daniel are for those who are thirsty. Is the sacrifice for those who are thirsty. And when a person is thirsty, they want to drink the water. Now imagine if you live in this world with no water. Imagine you in a desert with no water. When you go to the beach, whenever we go to the beach, we always thirsty, right? We always want water because we waste a lot of energy and we, we sweat a lot. So then our body needs to be hydrated. And if by any chance we are in the beach and that thirst comes, if no one is selling water or any drink around us to satisfy our thirst, we leave that beach, we leave that comfortable zone to go there and drink water and find water. Right? So when a person is thirsty, this thirsty that Jesus is talking about is the thirst of a desperation. Is that true hunger. So he is addressing, he is addressing with a cry out to those who are thirsty. Now, who are these who are thirsty? The people that are well in their health? No. Are the people who are doing well in their family and they are very well, everybody's happy, they have money, they have food, they have their daily bread? No, these are not the ones that are thirsty. The thirsty are the ones that feel deep emptiness in their soul. They carry and they feel their soul agonizing, agonizing thirst of something that comes and meets their soul. The thirst of something that may satisfy the hunger and the thirst of that soul, of their own soul. So when we are hungry, I speak for myself, whenever I am hungry, my goodness, I eat anything that is in front of me, anything that appears before my eyes, I will try to take a bite and diminish that hunger. If I'm thirsty, I cannot speak for that matter. I need to drink water. I don't know if you noticed, but every time I make the program, even in the services, there is always water next to me because I cannot speak if there is no water there. Because comes that thirst in my mouth and it's desperate. It is desperate. Right now, I need to drink water. But Jesus is saying with this kind of people, people that are thirsty, the person that is unemployed and they are in need, they don't have what to eat, the person who is sick and they take doctors, they go to doctors and the doctor can't diagnose the problem, the person that is desperate to get married, but they don't have conditions and now they are anxious to get married, to get married right away, right? So, a people, the thirsty, are these people that are in a state that is desperate, a desperate state. So, Jesus, he spoke directly to those who are desperate and truly want to receive the water of life, the spirit of life. So, then they leave all behind they leave everything behind and they prioritize those who are thirsty. The people who are thirsty, they prioritize the Holy Spirit. So then these that are obviously satisfied, they are going to be satisfied because we had a testimony of Sheila, if I'm not mistaken, her, her name. And she was telling us, it's a young lady, and she was saying that she did all she did all the fasts of Daniel. But she would do them not with a thirst. She was not thirsty. She had no hunger for the Holy Spirit. She, matter of fact, had no reason to seek the Holy Spirit. And it's true, 
When a person is well, everything is fine in their life, they are successful, they have money, they have everything. So then this person, they, what is their, what is the argument or what is the subject or the reason for such person to seek the water of life if they are, if they have everything they need here on earth, right? So, sometimes you're going to speak to someone about the Holy Spirit and you're going to stretch out your hands to help and they say, no, I already know, I, I'm, fi I'm fine in my religion. And then they turn their back to you. And how come? Because these are people who are not thirsty. That is why they do not make any regards to the offers of the Lord Jesus. But Jesus, he came, my dear listener, he did not come to those who are fine, because he said that those who are fine, they don't need the doctors, but the ones who are sick. So the ones who are sick, and it's true, you know, because the person sometimes is sick, they are extremely bad, but pride, because of their pride, they maintain, they give the cold shoulder and do not accept their help. And Jesus has come to you, my dear listener. Maybe you are proud with your problem, but until when are you going to continue with that situation? Until when are you going to be waiting for a day for this problem to be resolved because of your pride, because you maintain this pride within you, you do not want to give in. To give in. And Jesus has come to you and he came to you who are proud, but he can only give you to drink if you come. Don't wait that he will send you someone or that he will come to you. He is coming to you right now as we speak to you, Jesus is coming to you through his servants. But of course, if you don't, do not pay no mind to what he is saying, so there is nothing that he can do. But if you say before this pride that you carry within you and you realize you must know that Jesus is inviting you, calling you, and he comes to those who are thirsty, he came, he came to those who are depressed, he came to those who are afflicted. He came to those who are sick. He has come to those, all those who are afflicted. To all those, all those that are suffering and urging in pain. So, if you are this kind of person, Jesus has come to you and the invitation is especially for you. He is crying out for you. I have the certainty that in this moment, He is speaking within you. Somewhere, somehow, everything that we are talking here, everything that we spoke about, I am certain that a word has touched you, made you now to feel and that word right there, listen, it's the Holy Spirit speaking with you. It is the Lord Jesus crying out for you. He says, come to me and drink. Come to me and drink. Because he who believes in me, he who believes in me, and he who obeys my word, hears my voice, and believes, and practice, will drink of living waters, and this water will be like rivers of living water for all eternity, and this we are going to speak tomorrow, but do not forget it, Jesus, maybe today, maybe your last day, not of the great feast, but your last day of life, who knows? Who knows? You do not know. We do not know. It can be my last day as well. It can be your last day as well. But there is still time. And if you come to the Lord Jesus, He is going to give you to drink of the Holy Spirit who will make of you a fountain of living water. I've come to you Lay down my past at your feet To pour out my soul and to give you 
the due honor you deserve. Now I stand here, though I'm not deserving, I know you know where I've been, who I am, why I bring you this perfume. Yet you see, I believe the tears that I cry are sincere of nothing of worth to offer you but I give you my life tis all I can give you the nothing I am for you, but I give you my life. 